A patient arrives at an initial evaluation with complaints of ankle pain that began with sudden onset after the patient jumped off a couch. The Thompson test yields a positive result. This is indicative of A. Ruptured Achilles tendon B. Navicular fracture A true leg length discrepancy may be differentiated from sacroiliac contribution by performing the supine to long sit test. When a patient has a right anterior innominate, A. The right leg will appear shorter in supine and the same length in long sitting. B. The right leg will appear longer in supine and shorter in long sitting. While working with the upper extremity of a patient who recently had a right hemisphere cerebral vascular accident, the therapist should avoid a. Passive range of motion of the right arm as the patient is at risk for glenohumeral subluxation. b. Pulling on the patient's left arm to help them stand with transfers. In the initial evaluation of a patient with back pain, the patient describes symptoms including pain that radiates to the dorsal aspect of the foot accompanied by tingling. On assessment, there is weakness in ankle dorsiflexion. The most likely cause of the patient's back pain is A. Nerve root irritation at L4-L5 B. Nerve root irritation at L5-S1 While reviewing a chart of a new evaluation for PT in acute care, the therapist finds that the patient currently has the following lab values, pH 7.41, PACO 2, 33, HCO 3, 20. Which of the following is correct regarding this patient? A. The patient is in acute respiratory alkalosis. B. The patient is in compensated respiratory alkalosis. C. The patient is in acute metabolic alkalosis. A patient has a slewy wound with moderate exudate. The most appropriate wound dressing for this patient is A. Alginate with a secondary foam dressing. B. Foam dressing with a secondary film dressing. C. Hydrocolloid with secondary film dressing. D. Hydrogel dressing alone. You are providing wound care for a recent adult burn unit admission. The patient presents with burns covering the left anterior leg, anterior chest, and left anterior arm. What percent of the patient can you estimate is the burn area? A. 50% B. 38.5% C. 31.5% A patient has a diagnosis of Graves' disease. Which physiological response to exercise can you expect from this patient in relation to their diagnosis? A. Elevated heart rate. B. Increased respiration rate. C. Elevated O2 saturation. Pain from gallstones often refers to the A. Chest. B. Left shoulder and scapular area. C. Right shoulder and scapular area. D. Right lumbar and posterior thigh. When working with a patient with Crohn's disease, the patient should avoid the following when trying to manage their pain. A. Ice as patients with Crohn's disease are cold and tolerant. B. NSAIDs due to irritation to GI system. You are treating a new mother for lower back pain. 
She revealed during the session that she is having urinary incontinence frequently, especially when she coughs or sneezes. The best intervention to begin for her is A. Refer her back to her OBGYN B. Core strengthening exercise C. Begin Kegel exercises While performing an evaluation, the therapist palpates a hard, non-movable, lump in the patient's right axillary. The best action to take next is A. Monitor the lump over the next few therapy sessions. B. Ask the patient if they have ever noticed it or had a physician check it. C. Contact the referring provider to order a biopsy. When determining therapeutic exercises for patients in Phase 1 management of lymphedema, which of the following is appropriate? A. Passive range and bed exercise only. B. Seated activity only. C. Light exercises such as walking and light resistance training. An elderly patient reports bouts of dizziness regularly throughout the day. The patient has multiple comorbidities she is being treated for. Her blood pressure is normal and positional vertigo is ruled out. The most likely cause for dizziness in this patient is A. A normal part of the aging process B. Side effects of polypharmacy In a patient with poorly managed diabetes, which of the following is a precaution that should be taken in their plan of care? A. Using caution during balance activities as diabetics can have decreased proprioception due to neuropathy. B. Checking blood glucose before and after treatment to ensure normal levels for safe exercise. A four-year-old child with spina bifida occulta, at the L5 level, is beginning to ambulate. Which orthotic would be the best option to address this child's gait deficits? A. Knee ankle foot orthosis, CAFO. B. Dynamic ankle foot orthosis, DAFO. C. Rigid ankle foot orthosis, AFO. A therapist is working with a new spinal cord injury, complete T4, patient on getting a wheelchair for discharge. The best features of this chair are A. Power wheelchair with tilt and space for pressure relief. B. Manual wheelchair with pressure relief cushion. Which of the following patients are appropriate for phonophoresis treatment? A. A 72-year-old male patient with COPD and a history of MI with a rotator cuff injury. B. An 18-year-old female patient with severe road rash following a motorcycle accident. When using dexamethasone in iontophoresis, it should be I. Placed on the cathode as dexamethasone is positively charged. B. Placed on the anode as dexamethasone is negatively charged. C. Placed on the cathode as dexamethasone is negatively charged. What are the appropriate precautions to use with a patient with disseminated herpes zoster virus in acute care? A. Gloves. B. Gloves and gown. C. Gloves, gown, and mask. D. Isolation in a negative pressure room. A new special test to predict the integrity of the ACL was found to have a test retest correlation of 95 and inter reliability of 75.
Using this information, it can be said that A. The test is reliable between tests with the same therapist and between therapists. B. The test is reliable with the same therapist but is not reliable between therapists. If a magnetic resonance image, MRI, correctly identifies 95% of patients as positive for anterior cruciate ligament tears, then the MRI is A. Sensitive B. Specific C. Significant A physical therapist evaluated a 66-year-old female who has a history of severe head trauma following a motor vehicle accident. The patient has difficulty with rapid alternating movements while performing neurologic testing. The best term to describe this specific impairment is A. Dysarthria B. Dysdiaticokinesia A 45-year-old male presents to the burn unit with partial thickness burns over the entire right arm, left arm, front of the head, and front of the chest. Approximately what percentage of his body is burned? A. 31.5% B. 36% C. 40.5% A patient presents to the inpatient rehabilitation unit who has suffered a vertebrobasilar CVA and has difficulty adducting and depressing his eyes. Which cranial nerve is the most likely cause of this impairment? A. CN2 B. CN3 C. CN4 which is false regarding cerebral palsy. A. It is a permanent and progressive condition. B. The individual may present with hypotonia, hypertonia, dystonia, ataxia, and mixed tone. C. It is often associated with mental retardation and seizures. A point has a Trendelenburg gait. The POC includes functional strengthening, which would most target the weakened muscles. A. Prone hip extension. B. Wall squats. C. Lateral step ups. Which is not a typical characteristic of a venous ulcer. A. Well-demarcated lesion B. Little to no pain C. Yellow fibrous covering with granulation D. Located over the medial malleolus Which of the following is an example of heat transmission through radiation? A. Infrared lamp B. Hot pack. C. Paraffin. D. Fluid therapy. If a goal is to achieve maximum strength, which resistive training protocol is most appropriate? A. 70% of 1 RM and performing 3 sets of 12 repetitions. B. 80% of 1 RM and performing 3 sets of 10 repetitions. C. 40% of 1 RM and performing 3 sets of 20 repetitions. D. 95% of 1 RM and performing 1 set of 8 repetitions. Which of the following patients would be most susceptible to catching a cold in a clinic? A. A patient who had a recent brain injury. B. A patient undergoing chemo. C. A patient with a recent ankle fracture. D. A patient in the acute stage of RA.
A patient has undergone a TKA and is in the acute hospital setting using a continuous, passive movement CPM, machine. The CPM will assist in prompting all of the following, except what? A. Increased edema. B. Decreased postoperative pain. C. Increased ROM. When performing a gait analysis of a point with an above-knee amputation, the PTA notices circumduction during the swing phase on the prosthetic side. Which does not cause this deviation? A. Short prosthesis. B. Abduction contracture. In regards to the acronym FITT, which is not a correct term. A. Time. B. Type. C. Fitness. D. Intensity. The PTA should educate patients with lymphedema on management strategies which is not a strategy for managing swelling. A. Wear compression garments. B. Maintain water intake. C. Keep limbs in dependent position. Passive stretching would be inappropriate for a child with which condition? A. R.A. B. Cerebral palsy. C. Osteogenesis imperfecta. D. Spina bifida. The PTA is instructing a point with a new transtibial amputation in positioning strategies to reduce the likelihood of contractors. Which position would promote contracture development? A. Sitting with the limb dependent and knee flexed. B. Prone lying. Regarding general principles of progression, which principle is not an accurate progression of an exercise? A. Large base of support to small. B. Lots of feedback to no feedback. C. Higher center of gravity to a lower. PTs and PTAs are mandated reporters of abuse in which population? A. Elders. B. Children. C. Disabled. D. All of the above. As a result of MS, a point is displaying impaired dynamic standing balance deficiencies. Which intervention is best indicated for this patient? A. Standing with a narrow base of support in a tandem stance. B. Reaching for cones outside base of support. C. Standing with eyes closed on an even surface. The PTA is working to improve standing balance. Which sensory training intervention would be most challenging? A. Standing over dense foam with eyes closed. B. Standing over dense foam with eyes open. C. Standing over the carpet with eyes open. D. Standing over the tile floor with eyes open. For a point with UE involvement after stroke, which secondary musculoskeletal condition is least likely? A. Impingement. B. Adhesive capsulitis. C. Should sublimation. D. A slap lesion. The PTA is teaching her point with COPD strategies and positions to help to catch their breath. Which position is most effective? A. Supine. 
B. Seated leaning backward into the extension. C. Seated leaning forward on the forearms. The PTA is teaching a point with a spinal cord injury at L1 to manage curbs in his wheelchair. The best way to instruct the point is to have him A. Throw the head and trunk forward to lift the back wheels. B. Grab the hand rims posteriorly and then pull them forward rapidly. Which of the following is not a contraindication to aquatic exercise intervention? A. Bowel or bladder incontinence. B. Fear of water. C. Water and airborne infections. D. Severe epilepsy. Which of the following is not an absolute contraindication to joint mobilization? A. Joint ankylosis. B. Down syndrome. C. Bone malignancy. D. Pregnancy. The PT is working with a patient who has HIV. Through which of the following body fluids is HIV transmissible? A. Blood. B. Sweat. C. Urine. D. Vomit. During which phase of healing in a musculoskeletal injury are modalities least likely to be used in treatment? A. Always indicated. B. Functional restoration phase. C. Subacute phase. D. Acute, inflammatory phase.